city is more or less the same, uh, then they, they can make only London forces or uh, weak non-polar, non-polar fractions. But when it comes to OH, so if hydrogen is joined with oxygen or nitrogen or fluorine, they all form hydrogen bonds. So in this case, the answer would be H bonds. Okay. That's the reason for the answer. A question here telling if ammonium nitrate when it is dissolves I'm going to go through these questions if you have if you want me to stop just tell me oh I didn't understand that part okay so these are just direct questions dissolves what happens and it uh, when the ammonium nitrate dissolves in water the solution becomes cold okay they want to know what what happens then what happens is when it is cold, then delta H has to be positive value. That means it's endothermic. When something is endothermic, the energy of the forces broken because when a reaction happens, A, A, B, B, okay, think it is as this as water, this as ammonium nitrate. These bronze has to break for it to get dissolved, right? Dissolving, solubility means anions or whatever that compound gets mixed among the water molecules. So if we break it down, we have ammonium here, nitrate here, uh, water O minus plus, uh, minus O minus uh, partial charge would be attracted to that. H plus the charge would be attracted here. So these sort of things happen. It means there's an intermolecular force here. The previous intermolecular force is now broken. So when you, to break, you have to give in energy. When these bonds are formed, it is energy is given, energy, okay, energy is given in. This is energy is given out, okay? So there's a difference between these two. If the energy you gives in, the put in, because the forces are stronger, you have to give more energy. And when they form only little less energy even, then there's a reduction, right? More energy is absorbed in the system. So what it means is forces, energy of forces broken, broken, okay, exceeds the energy of forces formed. Because when they form, it gives out energy. You have forces formed, which therefore it is a negative and endothermic. Energy of forces broken exists. You to break, you have to give in energy. So it has taken more energy, but given also less. <coughs> so the whole system cools down as a system. Okay, the energy is inside. So don't think that uh, if it is taken more energy, why it doesn't? We're talking about the the energy was used to make the bonds, that's why. To break the bonds, sorry. So the, to break, the, that's why I say energy of forces broken exceeds means the energy you gave to break these bonds, it's gone now. Then when they form, it gives out energy, but it's less. So initially it was hot, now it's cold. That's the reason, okay? I have a question here on what type of type of I put I am for intermolecular forces exists in hexane. Hexane is an alkane, you know it now. So if I draw this, it doesn't have double bond or triple bond, three carbons. Assuming it's normal hexane because it's just a long chain. So it's N hexane or just normal hexane, hexane. So you can see because the carbon and hydrogen, the difference between the uh, electronegativity is so small, it doesn't have any polarity. So it will have only non-polar, non-polar bonds only. These are called also called London forces. 
Okay. So if they ask what kind of forces, this is going to be uh, okay, non-polar, non-polar, but it's non-polar, non-polar happened by the induction. So correct. induced non-polar. This is induced non-polar. Okay, induced. So non-polar, non-polar, always say if I take chlorine, chlorine, they have the same. So the electron is right in the middle, but it gets induced when it travels like that. At this point, this has negative, that has positive. So that's that induction. That sort of a thing is only happening in hexane molecules. That's how they combine. So London forces are induced dipole and induced dipole. Okay, okay. I put in this non-polar because it's non-polar to begin with. Then when it's induced, it becomes di, becomes di. Okay, so they are non-polar, non-polar bonds. But if they are making bonds, it has to be induced as a result of this induction. It has dipole, so it will be induced dipole, induced dipole. Okay. These are just generally the theory. If you know these questions, let us see. <clears throat> What are the different questions? Now, which compound is expected? So I have a question here telling which compound is expected to be the most soluble in what? Right, they are given things OH, CH2, CH2, OH, CH3, CH2, CH2, CH3, CH3, CH2, OCH2, CH3. Okay. This is similar to hexane, right? So it will have only induced, I shorten, induced dipole dipole and induced dipole okay now this one yes there's some polarity but this has this is this could make some polar polar bonds okay but here it also has hydrogen bond so hydrogen bond is stronger than just the dipole so therefore um, the most soluble in water would be this compound okay A diol, so two or more. So that would be the answer. The reason is because it has hydrogen bonds forming. So it, the bond will be stronger, more soluble. Okay, I have another question here telling what is a surfactant molecule? Surfactant. Molecule, what is it? Surfactant used to cleaning, right? What happens? One part gets connected to the oily, greasy dirt, and the other part gets connected to the polar water. So, a surfactant molecule always has one end. You went through this, is one end of the uh, molecule is polar, the other end is. non-polar. <clears throat> so directly from notes, if you have studied the theory part of it, you will know that. Okay. A question here telling which compound I'm not going to write the whole thing because I'm telling you to write which compound will have the strongest intermolecular forces, okay, which compounds. So they're given three compounds here, like pentane, two, two, dimethyl propane, and ethane. Right? Well, let's analyze this because it's difficult to say, right? So pentane means five carbon. Right? We know in an alkane, longer the carbon chain, the, the boiling points, uh, melting points go up. That means it has strongest, uh, I mean, stronger intermolecular forces. So out of these three, that are ethane is like this.
right? So between ethane and methane, I would go for methane, right? Sorry, ethane and pentane, I would go for pentane because pentane has five carbons, right? So out of those two, the stronger one would be pentane out of these two, right? Now let us take dimethylpropane. Dimethylpropane, if you write it 2, 2, so it's propane, I put three carbons first, and then 2, 2 means the middle one would have methyl, methyl, and then these are hydrogens. This also has five carbons, right? This is five carbons, this is five carbons, but this is branched. What did I say when it's branching? Uh, the melting points, boiling points, reduces branching because it's difficult to make the intermolecular forces because of these branches coming. These are the branches. So the out of these two, this will be the stronger. So the stronger one. So out of the three, the strongest would be pentane for that reason. <coughs> okay. All right. All right. I have a question here saying if one were to drink seawater, See water, salt water, right? Concentrated water. Concentration is high. What ha will happen to the cell? So inside the cell, water is high. That's why low concentration, right? When I say low concentration, I'm referring to the solute concentration. What is the solvent? So when it is high, like sea water, we are talking about high means the high concentration of seawater. Okay. That means the water concentration, I'm putting in uh, square brackets, that means is low. Then water flows from high to low through a semi-permeable membrane because the cell wall, animal cell wall, animal cell membrane is semi-permeable. Okay. So then osmosis happens. So because of that, this, this cell, because the water goes, then it shrivels, right? So the cell would shrivel is the correct. But why is it? Because it's hyperosmosis. Osmotic. Hyperosmotic. Seawater is hyperosmotic. So that's the P. Hyperosmotic, yeah? Osmosis happen because see what is very concentrated. It's hyper. It's going out. Hyper means less. Okay. Iso means the same. So. All right. These questions ask butanol. So butanol is expected, so it doesn't matter. No, is expected to boil at one one eight degrees. Okay, so that means when you say the normal boiling point, say normal boiling point means they are defined according to the sea level. Yeah, but if it is in high altitude, this is the atmosphere atmosphere. This pressure is low, right? This pressure is high. Normally it is 180 m. So if this pressure is low, the boiling would happen at a lower temperature. So the question is about at what temperature would it happen? Is it at 180? Is it at higher? Is it at lower? Or can't you say it? Okay, It's at lower because boiling definition is the, def the temperature at which the vapor pressure of that solvent or whatever the substance is equal to the atmospheric pressure. So here it takes 118 degrees and here it's low because the vapor pressure emanating from that substance has to be only very little because low pressure is low high at high altitudes. So it's lower temperature. Okay. Right. 
of course, they will give you a graph like that, which I've told you to watch for these graphs. This is phase diagram, pressure, temperature, and uh, let me mark these ones like this. At this point, I will call it G. G. So there will be questions about what are these phases. Obviously, this is a solid, number one. This is liquid. Which, you know, this is a gas. This G is triple point. Triple point. And this is the critical. Critical point. Okay, this is the temperature after uh, the after, at this so critical pressure at this point critical temperature beyond this temperature liquid and gases stay the same so that's why it's critical uh, after that you however pressure you put it won't the the gas wouldn't get dissolved wouldn't become a liquid because you know to make it liquefaction you need high pressure and low temperature so okay. so you need to know what are these things solid liquid and also make pay attention to this one when the line is this way inclined to your left <laughs> that means the solid density is less than the liquid density like water okay our question is about the particle size, we, we studied about colloids. But... Particle sizes, so always remember particle size is the solution when it is completely dissolved, solution particles are the smallest. Then comes colloidal, they are neither solution, uh, soluble completely or uh, sedimentary. So, Then comes the suspension or the sedimentation. It's colloidal particle. That's where the scattering of lights happen. So we use something like turbidity meter to find the concentration. Turbidity meter. Okay. And um, when you talk about gas and liquid, always remember gas, you high pressure to liquefy or dissolve. That is followed by a low temperature. So unless if you have high pressure, low temperature, then we can. There'll be questions like that about asking what are the conditions. Okay. Now we come to some of the calculations part I have got once I have. You have to calculate molarity. M. M is known as molarity. So remember, molarity. Simple M is molarity. The difference is this is number. So I'm, I don't have to write it again. Number of moles of solute over one liter or thousand, same as thousand milliliters of solution, both to together molarity and I not molarity molarity means same again okay, number top part is the same number of moles of solute divided by one kg of solvent okay then we have things like parts per million is milligrams per liter we have mass to Percentage of mass to mass. Mass to mass percentage. That means mass, not moles, moles or anything, mass of solute over total mass times 100. We have volume to volume percentage. That means volume of solute over total volume times 100. Okay. 
then we have so um okay, the mass volume so mass to the total volume that's all okay all right so this question i have here is they're asking the molarity of potassium hydroxide okay if the solution was pre prepared with 25 grams of koh you dissolve in 550 milliliter water or solution. So we have 25 grams gone into 550, right? But our definition of it is the moles of KOH divided by one liter, right? This is 550. So first of all, let us find what is this 25 grams in kilograms. So to find the number of moles is given by mass divided by molar mass in case you have forgotten that. Okay, so now 25 divided by the molar mass of KOH. 25 divided by molar mass of KOH, I have it here as 56.11. Then my number of moles would be point <clears throat> okay, one one. Uh, I get point four. I will say just to keep it easy, okay, more. Now that, now we have it's in moles, so we know 0.45 moles of KOH in 550 milliliters, but our definition we need one liter, which is same as 1000 milliliters, right? So to find M, we divide 0.45 divided by 550, because that's where it is now, in 1000 milliliters. And we should get the answer. So what did I say, 0 0.45, 0 0.45 divided by 550 times 1000, I get, get 0.818, okay? So that's the answer. So because I rounded it here, you know, so you don't get the exact answer, but that will be the answer here, 0.18. So think of the method we use. <clears throat> Okay, I have another question here. It says lithium nitrate. They're asking, okay, the, how many grams of lithium nitrate you need to prepare to prepare 600 milliliters of 0.5 M lithium NO3. So we need only 600 milliliters of this concentration, okay? We don't have to make a 0.5 moles, measure, get the molar, molecular mass and for 0.5 and put it in one liter, that's waste. So when you're a technician working in the lab and you have to form solutions, you have to think about the waste and things. So if we say for the semester students are going to use only um, 600 milliliters of lithium nitrate, you don't have to prepare one liter. You can make a stock solution. There are ways that you take something from the stock solution and then find how it uh, matches to, okay? But uh, yeah, it's a good thing. I will tell that too, and then how to go for grams. So first of all, you have to find how many moles should be in 600 milliliters. So if X being the number of moles you're looking for in 600, it should match with 0.5 in 1000, <clears throat> right? If you have 0.5 moles in 1000, how many is 600? So X is the number of moles. So because uh, this is called dilution method because X in 600 has to be 0.5 in 1000. So if I rearrange this equation, uh, X is given by, uh, divided by 1000 times 600. Always remember if this is milliliter, that is milliliter, okay? Because this is 0.5 means 0.5 moles in one liter. If I put one liter, you don't get the same thing because it's 1000, you have to say. Then 600 should be 0 0.6 if I make 1000 as one liter. You have converted. You cannot have two different units. So 0.5 divided by 1,000 times 600 tells me that I need only 0.3 moles to put in the 600 milliliters. So all I have to find is what is that it in grams. So um, I have to find the lithium nitrate molecular mass. 
I have it here at 68.95 grams. That's for one mole. So 0.3 moles it will be. 68.95 times 0.3. I get uh, 20.68 grams. That will be the answer. This is the dilution method, okay? Yeah, yeah, I have a question about uh, percentage weight to weight. This is same as percentage mass to mass. Take it like that, okay? We know there's a difference between mass and weight, but just take what's given here, okay? So otherwise mass times gravity is the weight, okay? But just accept it as it. Of lithium hydroxide. <clears throat> Okay, so we have to find the mass to mass weight. So there's, they're asking you to calculate mass to mass um, or weight to weight percentage of lithium hydroxide if it was prepared with 30 grams in 210 grams of water. So 30 grams of, so what do you do? The, the, the definition of weight to weight or mass to mass is mass of lithium OH or the solute and total mass times 100, okay? So I will put 30 here. Here would be 210 plus 30 and, and, uh, and times by 100. So two, uh, 240, so 30 divided by 240 times 100, I get 12.5%. That's what will be the Wait to it. <clears throat> percent or mass to mass percent. Okay, these are straightforward applying the formula, but you need to know why you applied, how the those from um, formula were derived, what is the basis for that. All right, we have twenty nine point percent weight to weight ammonia, and they tell us. The density of this solution, density of the solution of the solution. So you have to assume, like, if it is confusing, this is where the chemistry part comes. We have ammonia, it's a gas, we put it in water and liquefy. Now I have a solution of ammonia in water. The density is given by, for that. 29% ammonia is the weight by weight. Yes. Now, they are asking you to determine the molarity. Molarity. That is what they ask in this solution. So, let us take it uh, apart, our knowledge. When you say 29%, when, you, when I say 29%, that means... 29 grams of ammonia in 100 grams of total mass, right? That's what it's 29% weight to weight means. So let us find 29 grams here because they're asking molarity. Molarity defined by the number of moles in one liter, the whole solution, right? Now, if it was molality, then it's a different situation, but molality. So we had to find this 100 grams. What is the volume? We had to find 29 grams, the number of moles. Not no, it is in no dot. I put it a number, okay? All right, so 29, if I divide that mass by the molar mass of ammonia, which I have here 17.04, let me just use it 17, okay? Then do that for first. 29 divided by 17, I get 1.7 moles. Now we know that 1.7 moles, that part is solved, that's 1.7. But to say, what is the volume, then convert it to one liter. 1.7 in 100 grams right now. To convert, we have density here. 
density of the solution is okay i did write it is 0.9 what is this grams per milliliter okay fine so what does density means density means mass over volume so i rearrange it volume equals mass divided by density so the mass is 100 the total right we are taking the total 100 divided by 0.9 the density I know that it is in 1.11 milliliters. I found the volume now. So now we can rewrite 1.7 is in 111. One, one. Uh, for 1000, that's how the definition one liter means 1000 milliliters. <clears throat> so here you take it 1.7 was in, in 100 grams, okay? Or 111.11. So times thousand. We get fifteen point three M. That to be the answer. Okay. right under this question this is about an enzyme doesn't matter what enzyme because enzymes don't break down but we take an enzyme uh, that breaks bacterial cell walls okay so enzyme is in a solution okay 0.15 grams in 210 milliliters Okay, and remember this 210 milliliters, 0 0.5, 0 0.15 grams. Okay, and they are asking the molar mass of enzyme. That's what they're asking, molar mass of enzyme. They, are, they have given us, this is capital pi, okay? You know, like you write pi like that, this is the capital pi. For osmotic pressure, they have given osmotic pressure as point. 0, 0, 1, 2, 5 millimeter mercury. So this is a bit complicated getting. And they have said at 25 degrees centigrade. Okay. So they have given the osmotic pressure. They have given how many grams in 210 milliliters. And they're asking molar mass of enzyme. So let us just say it because we have more osmotic pressure. Let us write the equation for osmotic pressure is MRT or sometimes they say Okay, IMRT or ICRT. Okay, they say ICRT, that to say concentration, I'm writing is actually molarity. Remember, this M is molarity. It's the same as concentration, okay? I means Van't Hoff factor, that to how many ions or something, it will break down. So here, enzyme doesn't break down. So I, I will have IS1. M, we don't know. R we know because we are using millimeter mercury, we can have 0 0.082. Go back and think about the gases we did. This is a standard, you can write it down. This is I said, you should have a, like a periodic table that gives all the information and on the sides of the periodic table, you should have all these equations. Then when you do questions, it's easy, you have it there, okay? And then eventually you remember them. Then temperature is 25 plus, but I have to add 273 to make it Kelvin. So I have 298. And on this side, I have 0 0.00125, okay? Now I should be able to find M is the molarity by rearranging. When I am rearrange, I get 0 0.00125 divided by, okay, this is separately, and divided by 0 0.082 times 298. Let us see what I get there. 0 0.00125 divided by 0 0.082 divide by 298, I get a long one, point zero 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 five one one five. okay? I can write it in scientific notation as five points. So if I put a dot there, it goes like this. One, two, three, four, five, one, one, five times 10 to the negative five, okay? M, I got M. What does M mean? 
It means the concentration of this solution, we got it, but for one liter. So we know 5.115, 10 to the negative five in one liter means thousand. But actually our, uh, that concentration is in 210 because we are trying to find the molar mass, okay? This number of moles in thousand. So in 210, because that's the original, we can find the number of moles. So 0 0.005 and divide by 1000 times 210, I get 0 0.0001074 4 moles. So that's the number of moles that was in this, uh, what is it, 0.15 grams, see? So somebody took 0.15 grams, put it into 210 ml, they got a concentration of 115 but we went with the osmotic pressure, we got the molarity, which is the same. It's for 1,000, for 210 we got, but this was the number of moles in 0.15 grams, originally 0.15 grams. So to find in one mole, this is the question, which is molar mass, I type molar mass or mass in one mole, is 0.15 divided by 0.00001 or seven. Okay, so, you can write a scientific notation or do it or whatever you want. Okay. Um, so this is 0.15 divided by 0.00001 or 7. I get 1. Huge amount. Let us see that I've done anything. Right? 298 plus the number of more. That was a thousand, and this was in 210 milliliters. Seven, five grams. So, 0.15 divided by 0 0.06. I should get, I'm getting something like 1.4018, sorry, 14,018. But if I write in certain, I get 1.4018 times 10 to the power four, okay? So okay. out of the answers here, this is the closest. So closest, they have given 1.39 because uh, uh, yeah, depending on what I do, rounding up or down, it's different parts. That's right. Okay. Uh, okay. So I think I hear. Uh, what did I do? One. Take this point zero 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 five one one five divided by thousand times two one zero. Oh. Yeah. So yeah, it, it's it's one two three four one two three four. Yeah. So this is the closest to get. That's the answer. All right. Look at the method. They gave osmotic pressure, but they also gave a van Top factor we can, we found out because it's an enzyme. It doesn't break down. Then we know the temperature they gave us. They, they didn't give us our value, but we know. So from that, we know we knew we can find the molarity. After we found the molarity, we know number of moles in one liter, but Original solution was 210. So we calculated, then we knew original solutions should have only this number of moles. But that mass we knew, 0.115 grams. So if 0.15, this number of moles, 0 .0, for one, you divide it by that, then you get point. Okay? That's how we got the answer. Okay. So these are the calculations that may be confusing, but just if you take it down. Like step by step, you should be able to do it. So we have here lysine. The next question we have lysine. It's an amino acid, they say, formed a solution. Now, lysine formed a solution is 0.3 grams in 12 grams. Okay, not grams, okay, not liter, 12 grams of of biphenyl biphenyl which freezes at normal freezing point 68.63 okay 
Okay, so six point oh three grams of lysine in twelve grams of biphenyl. So we have point three. I'll put L, twelve grams of I'll put B biphenyl. But normal biphenyl tracing point is uh, ah okay. So not the normal. When you mix it like that, it gave a freezing point of six eight point six. Okay. This is the freezing point after you added this. Remember, so normal freezing point they have given in normal freezing point they have given as seventy. This was sixty eight point six three, and they also give us KF cryoscopic constant or um, depression of freezing point constant as eight per molal solution molality. Okay, so then when we get these things. Freezing point, we know that it has to do with the depression of freezing point. So I put delta Tf equals Mantor factor Kf and M. Right? What is delta T? Is the difference between 70 and 68.63, right? From 70, it went down. Right? So Make sure you ensure using the phone um, calculator, they're correct all the time. So, I have here like minus 1.37, right? Delta T. I is because it's an enzyme, it doesn't break down. So, I take it as 1. Kf is 8. I don't know M. So, I can find out M, right? So, although it's negative, we'll just take this value. 1.37. So 1.37 divided by 8. Yeah. Okay. So I have rearranged to find the light. So what are they asking? What is the molar mass? So they're asking the molar mass. Now, what this 0 0.171 means, 0 0.171 means moles of lysine in 1 kg, or we can make it as 1,000 grams, okay, 1 kg. That's what it means. But the, the what we had was 0 0.3 grams in 12. So let us do the same thing. What is 0.171 in 1,000 grams? times, we have for 12 grams, what would have happened? 12 grams, okay? So, 0 0.171 divided by 1,000 times 12, okay? 0 0.002, 1 will be said, 0 0.001, okay? Moles. So, that number of moles was in 0 0.3 grams, right? 0 0.0021 moles, Lysine actually was in 0.3 grams. So one mole would be, or which is means the mole mole of lysine, which is an ammonia acid. Lysine, you take tablets, are the ammonia acid. It's good for if you have a uh, breakout in your skin. If you take lysine, it just vanishes all the, the skin uh, thing. Okay, so if you have chap lips or something, you can take lysine. Because sometimes some people get stomach problems with lysine. It's an amino acid. So, okay. Uh, so, don't take my address and medical address. I'm just telling you, just general knowledge, okay? So one mole would be 0 0.3 divided by 0 0.0021. I get closest as 143 grams because I, you know, round it up or down. 143 grams. And the answer here is 146. So if you had gone particularly each one, but 143, okay? So that's how you get the answer. What happened here? They didn't give anything. They said 0.3 grams in 12 grams. That's it. And say the freezing point, the new one was 68.63. But they gave the normal one. From that, we got the difference, delta T. We, we covered that. Then we went for the equation I, K, F, M. K, F they gave us. M they didn't. I is 1 because I value was 1 because it doesn't break down. Once we found out the molality, the definition is 0.17 moles in 1 kg or 1,000 grams. But initially we didn't have thousand. It was twelve grams. So we multiply. 
divide like this and 12 grams, we got the number of moles that was in 12 grams. But we know the actual grams of lysine was 0.3. So if 0 0.0021 uh, moles weighed 0.3 grams, one mole would have weighed 143 grams. That's what it means. <laughs> About everybody, um, I need to do about another five questions. I will. Uh, no, three questions. I'll just do one more and stop it, and then I will do the rest Tuesday. So this sort of uh, this. Questions actually. Oh. Um, I miss some. So um, it's another question I had here. 25% uh, by weight, weight, sodium chloride. Okay. Molar mass of sodium chloride given as 58.44. Okay. So they're asking molar, molality. Asking me to find molality. Okay. Now, when you get something like that, don't get caught to this. Uh, mistake you might do. 25% part weight band weight means 25 of grams of sodium chloride in 100 grams total. Okay. But molality means moles of sodium chloride in 1 kg of water or the other part. So that part is given by 100 minus 25. That means 75 grams, right? So now we have 25 grams divided by 75 grams water or whatever the solution this is sodium chloride find how many moles are there 25 divided by 58 i'll just use 58 okay so 25 divided by 58 i get 0.43 moles that was in 75 grams now it's easy right 0.43 sodium chloride moles in 75 grams but i need to know is one kg means thousand right then i get the molar value so let us see, 0.43 divided by 75 times 1,000, I get something like 5.73. And that's how you do that. Okay, hold on for a minute. Okay, I paused the recording this app. Okay, so 5.73, okay, that's how you get it. Okay, then <clears throat> here, telling, uh, determine, determine potassium in parts per million when 60 grams, this is when, so when 60 grams of K2S potassium sulfite you dissolve in 50 liters of solution. Remember, they're asking potassium of K2S. Although 60 gram is for K2S, we are not talking about, we are talking about potassium only. So let us take K2S first and see the molar mass of that is 110. Okay, it says 110.27. I'll just take 110. Potassium is molar mass is 39, but because we have two, I multiply it by two, so I get 38, okay? No, sorry, 39, I get 78. Okay. I get 78 grams. Now this 78 grams of it 110, right? Can you remember we did percentages? It's better to have the percentage. So I will, 78 was in 110, but if it were 100, I would have 70%, roughly, okay, roughly it should be 71% of potassium in K2S, okay? Then in 60 grams, it should be 71%. So 60 times 71%, I will get 42.6 grams of potassium. Now we know 
42.6 grams of potassium in the solution is 50 right in 50 liters now we have to convert it to parts parts per million what do you mean by parts per million parts per million given by milligrams per liter so i convert this to milligrams and see for one liter so 42.6 grams to milligrams would be i multiply by thousand is still in 50 liters so i multiply 42.6 by thousand i get 42600 if i divide it by 50 i get milligrams because now this is in milligrams per liter right divide by 50 i get 852 okay that's how we do that All right, I'll try to finish this if I can. So there's a question about which solution? Has the highest osmotic pressure. Osmotic pressure. Okay, so they're given a set of solutions. So let us write it down, KCL. 0.15 and C6H2LO6, 0 0.05 CABR2, 0.1 M MgSO4. Okay. Now, what is the uh, equation? Pi, um, pi capital pi equals I R T. Right. R is the same for all. Correct. If it is the same temperature, assuming that they are all the same temperature, this should be same. And M is the molarity. I and M would be the change. So all I had to do is find I and M for each one and multiply. So I is the van top factor for potassium. One potassium, one chloride. It will be 2 times 0.15. Right? I get 0.3. Then here it is one form. Doesn't make its molecular form. So 1 times 0.15. Because M is molarity, right? That's right. Okay. I get 0.15. So definitely this can't be. Then put calcium bromide, it has calcium and bromide three. Okay, that is three times 0 0.055. So I get 0 0.15. So that's not the one because this is still higher. Magnesium sulfate, I get two times 0 0.1. So it's only 0 0.2. So the highest one would be this one because R is same, T is same. M is the one changing and R change. That's how we do that. If you get questions like that, that's how we do it. Okay, I have telling uh, determine the freezing point. They want to know you to know the freezing point of an aqueous Cu. So whenever aqueous means water, okay, CuCl two solution. Solution that contains 21.5 grams of CuCl2 in 450 grams of water. Okay. And they have given the molar mass of CuCl2. You should be able to do this by now after listening to all those things. And Kf of water is given as 1.86. Okay. This will give us, so what is this? Yeah, delta T F uh, depression of freezing point equals amount of factor KF and molarity, right? Now KF is given 1.86. CuCl2 will have three, you know, Cu, Cl2, one here, and Cl2, two, one plus two, we get three. So amount of factor would be three. What is the molarity? We are given the things to find because 21.5 grams is the mass, 25 grams, divide by this molar mass, 134.45, 21.5 divided by 134.45, I get 0.16, we'll say more, okay? Closest. But that was in 450 grams, 450 grams. So I have to find it for 1,000 grams, yeah? 
So 0.16 divided by 250 times 1000, I get 0.64 M. Now I put 0 0.64 here, I should get the, the depression point. So it will be three times 1.86 times 0.64, I get 3.57, right? What does it mean? It <coughs> it's the missing of my computer uh, calculator. Divide by this is one three four four The answer is not 0.6, so this is 0.35. So let us say 0.36. So 0.36. So then this value comes even three times 1.86 times 0.36. I get something like two, roughly, right? Because I got all these assumptions, right? Roughly two. That means the water zero was the freezing point normal when you add this to 21.5 grams to be minus two, roughly to be near minus two. That's what it means. Okay. But everybody, so remember they use the, when you use the calculator, double check on I never use the phone calculator on, on the, because I'm doing impromptu, I do these things, okay, that's true. Okay. All right, you need to know what is a colligative property that doesn't depending on the type, material of the substance, it only depends on the amount added, colligative properties. Yeah, that's why we did all that and I did the class there. So the some of the colligate properties we studies are vapor pressure lowering, osmotic pressure, depression of freezing point, and elevation of boiling point. So remember those are the four types of colligate properties. Okay. Any questions about asking uh, order of boiling points, order of boiling points when we use certain compounds. So depending on what type of bonds they make, that is the way to easiest way to separate them. And then if they if you're not sure if they're all making ionic bonds, then see the uh, size of the because uh, lower you go, go down the group, the stronger the bonds, ionic bonds. So I have written several here. Um right. So when you look at this list, you can see that. BA1, MGO, they are ionic bonds. Out of the size, this is higher, so that should have the highest body point because ionic bonds uh, comes to the top from everything. And then barium oxide. Okay. Now we have to see, okay, anything else? This one, this one, and this one. Okay, this has hydrogen bonds. So the next one would be the one with hydrogen bonds. So anything given, that's how you go. Right. Okay. Then after that, we have two options here. This is the polar. Oxygen is there, so it will it will make some polar polar bonding, and then this is just what we studied earlier. So CH three, this is okay. CH three, CH two, CH three. That's how we get the bond polarity. Look at for the ionic bonds first. If you have two ionic bonds, look for the larger molecule. So um, which is below the group in the same group if the same group below. Okay. They're not in the same group, just go for the lower one. Okay. All right. Finally, there may be questions telling that they give you an organic organic compound and ask, we uh, say use an organic compound uh, or if we use grease or something like that, just take grease, okay? If you use grease, something like that, then uh, to get rid of the, the get rid of that, you can't just wash it water because this is non-polar. Remember that, non-polar. So you need to use a non-polar solution. Non-polar solutions are like heptane or hexane. Those are the non-polar solution. Okay. Any organic compound is non-polar, then you can use it. You cannot use water. 
not going to be anything like carbon tetrachloride or something like that, or dichloromethane, because it's polar. You look for oxygen, look for chlorine like that. So it has to be something like non-polar, like hexane or heptane. Okay, those are the ones in the lab normally used to clean things. All right, everybody, I end the class there. We will have a good weekend. Now you can go and do the um, other um, questions and complete those things, okay?